Hello and God bless you. This is Ellen Mongan. I'm the host of Wow Mom. And today I have a guest, Deacon Pat. <laughs> We're doing Deacon and Dear. How'd you like that for an intro? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, dear. Hi, Deacon. He's not really a guest. He's, we actually have home in the midst of our children here in Augusta, Georgia, the ones that live in our neighborhood. And so it was a wonderful time of family this mm -hmm. year on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yes, yeah. We, uh, most of our family was uh, there. Uh, our youngest uh, son and his wife, um, she's due any time, and so uh, they were not about to travel here. But our son, and uh, Tyler and Tomo and his wife, Tomoko, they came from Florida. And uh, so Carolyn and Dan and their family uh, were here. And then uh, um, Charity and Ryan hosted at their house, and, and their Grand kids, most of their mom. kids were there. My mom and my and, sister and, Julie. That's right, and Ellen's mom, who was 96, uh, she, she had a great time, she says. And a lot of relatives came, Julie's two children, um, mm -hmm. her own children. Yep. Great to in Madison, yep. and yep. Keith, of course, came as Santa Claus. <laughs> And then two cousins came. Laura is um, my sister Lynn's daughter, and she came with Zach and her little baby, Mom, May. The May. May. <laughs> and She's lastly, not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, Johnny came with his dear wife, Jenny, and it was a fun time. Jerry had six children over, on Pop right. Can. We had over 30 people, I think, there. Yeah, so. it was nice. The best part was we, <clears throat> we, we built family. And that's what our ministry is about, is marriage, strong marriage, strong family. And we also made the Nokis. So if you want to see that, let's make the Nokis, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> we got video of it on the Facebook. Everybody, uh, that has become a tradition, which actually Ellen's mom started um, decades ago. and Because she would be the one who would host Thanksgiving. That was her holiday. Yes, she's and, very good uh, at that. So Nokis were uh, a key part of that. Um, so Thanksgiving dinner had its Italian flavor also. And then Keith took over making the knockies for and gave, everyone joined in. We got a video because Mom one time had the old-fashioned Thanksgiving on Channel 6 or Channel 12 News with Tina Terry, and I never did get a copy of it. If you're out there and you have the copy, please send it our way. And she has always made a big feast of the Thanksgiving feast. We didn't come here to talk about Thanksgiving. I'm wearing purple eyeshadow well, today. But, but, we are, but here. truthfully, we are here to talk about Thanksgiving, aren't we? I guess that would be yeah, true. Because what are we thankful for coming up? Well, it's supposed to be thanks living. That's my big There you go. And we're there supposed to live I, every day for I Christ. Agree with that. A big thank you card for him. And uh, what, do, what do you want to say about that? We want to well, love his advent. For us and many uh, certainly liturgical churches, uh, this is the advent season. It's right on the heels of Thanksgiving. And it's a time that the church provides, a season that provides us with time to think about uh, the coming of Christ, the gift that he is to all of us, and to be thankful for that gift, especially uh, when, on Christmas when we celebrate his arriving. Obviously, he's already come, mm -hmm. he's already here, but it's a, a, a remembrance of the fact that God humbled himself to come as a human being because of his love for us, so that we should always be thankful. We may not always be thankful for our, what's going on in our life or circumstances, but we should always be thankful for the fact that Jesus came to restore our relationship with God the Father, because you know we've had many prophetic words about his coming because uh, people have fallen away and were, you know, and. Jesus, I mean, God the Father had chosen the Jewish people, not chosen people, to be his representative on earth, and uh, they kept, uh, you know, having difficulty following <laughs> the path that uh, God had for them. Um, and that's not an indictment of them, that's the indictment of all humanity, is that we, we have a very hard time uh, doing what God wants us to do. Um, and he has what we call natural law in that uh, when you don't do things the way God wants us to do, there's consequences. There can be disease, emotional problems, uh, all kinds of things can happen. And so he um, had prepared 
the way for Jesus to come, this, and uh, people were not really ready to receive him for the most part. Yeah, I think that's sad. You know, in Augusta, Georgia, we live, there's a big preparation that goes on this spring, and it's called Prepare for the Master is Coming. The master is coming. So we have been the same way. I mean, there's this big old deal here. I, when I first got involved in it, right in our house, I didn't have any idea. There's a book written about it, how to store your, your linens for the next year. And it's huge. And you know why? They want to honor the person that's running their home. So we want to honor the Lord this year at Advent. And so we have to prepare. We have to prepare like like the way um, that way prepared Martha and Mary prepared the meal for Jesus you know Mary mm -hmm. prepared in prayer and what God called that higher calling that um, she's mm -hmm. chosen the better portion and Martha had to do the, the work because both are work you work brought in prayer I have a great intercessor to be brought in prayer and then get the work done of what are we going to feed the king so we want to clean our souls and get them ready so what they do one of the main traditions that you will remember is the advent wreath which we right. thought you find ours if you find it we'll have to get started on it we gotta find that kind of wreath we think it'd be fun to do there's not children involved in our home but we did love doing it with the children didn't we mm -hmm. so advent wreath has got four candles uh, representing each of the weeks prior to christmas and the coming of christ would they represent the purple or pink represent anything i don't remember deacon well, the, the violet color um, represents the Advent season, which and we have two seasons in the church which are meant to be somewhat uh, penitential. Mm -hmm. Advent is not is meant to be as penitential as the Lenten season, but the uh, church does things different by, uh, we don't do the Gloria until Christ comes, um, and uh, which is also the case in uh, Lent. But uh, in Lent, so the, the Advent's a shorter season. Uh, um, but we are encouraged to also uh, fast um, to some degree or something, change something. The whole idea is the church gives us seasons to look at where we are in our relationship with Jesus and with God uh, and to think about, okay, what maybe do I need to change or what do I need to do in this season to help me grow closer to Jesus, to be more like Jesus. Um, because the whole idea of Christmas is, uh, and which happens in the church, is the lights come on oh, because Jesus has come into the world and brought light. Mm -hmm. He's come and shown God's love to the world, the world that's in darkness. Well, that's why I wore this outfit today to get back. Because, you know, I'd like to do, I like to do different clothes for different things. But I just wore it today thinking, Pat, one of Pat's things that he, he wrote about was about the um, lights, like, let your light shine before men, so they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who's in heaven. And so I said, we're, we're not really supposed to sparkle. We're supposed to let Jesus sparkle through us in our heart. But I just want to represent the sparkling. There's so much. People sparkle during Christmas. They go from two to mm -hmm. pro and they're on Merry Christmas. And they, they buy things for people they wouldn't normally think of, just some, like the mailman. Or they, and they, they, they just donate live. more. They donate. And it's, a really, it's a joyous time. And I was so sad at times when you have like a, maybe a, a tough Christmas. But let's let the, just like with the wedding, let's let the preparation of our soul be more important than the preparation of our, in the natural. We, um, we really stress that and engage we can. People spend so much time pairing with what dress and what I want to wear, what I want to say, and, what I want. and the, all the fun of the preparation, let's start with our soul. So since it's starting first week of, of Advent, mm -hmm. well, we, we're going to do some new things, and Pat's going to name some new things that you can may try, but we also do some old things, which is we simplify Christmas. We don't do, we don't busy ourselves so much with the gifts and the, I try to be done by December of everything I need to do, which is Christmas letter and deciding you know, what I'm going to have in the letter, all that. But I think it's very important to start thinking now how we can clean our soul and get it ready for the king. And get it Master. on the on the right focus in terms of Jesus. It, it Presents are nice. Being giving is, mm -hmm. is good. But that's not what it's all about, is not getting gifts. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be about receiving Jesus. And that's a choice. It isn't, it's a gift that you have to open. And uh, so in part of the whole Advent, uh, and the liturgies and the Mass during Advent is to focus, are you ready? Because uh, many Jewish people and the chosen people were not 
fully ready to accept Jesus for who he was, even though there had been prophecies and etc. cetera. Um, and the question is, if Jesus came today, right now, in this second, are you ready? You ready? And uh, that's part of what Christmas and Advent is about, is focusing, are you ready to, you know, Jesus came with mercy and love and restoring our relationship with the Father the first time, but he will come again. And that time there will be judgment if he comes to bring his justice. And getting ready is depending, this, the talk of the women now for real is that we this year, like to, we like to go to daily mass. We like to end our day with six o'clock mass. Let's face it, who doesn't? You know, everything's done. You thank the Lord for the good day and then food. We usually prepare food that's in the oven or ready, you know, is. So this year we have mom with us and it'd be rude to be going every night. She not likes to eat. She's Italian. She, is, she likes making the nookies. She tells me that everyone likes to eat. But she wants her food. She wants a hot meal. So if we go, we don't go to mass every day like we were. So that's the opposite of what you're probably thinking how to prepare. Look at your season. Do you have a newborn baby? Are you pregnant? You can barely keep your head above the toilet. Then you might want to take sake a little less hard on yourself and just go. My Lent, we go. We could go. Our Lent is sharing a bathroom at night because Mom has the other bathroom and she just goes to the bathroom a lot. Mm -hmm. So we thank the Lord that that we're preparing all this last three months in trying to make sacrifices on His name. I know a lot of people know what that means about offering it up, but that's the kind of offering up you do that no one knows. Like. I offer up, I have to wait five minutes for that to get out of the bathroom. I do, and I thank the Lord for that. Because, you know, Lent is about doing, I mean, Lent is about doing what God's calling you to do. Mm -hmm. And it seems, may seem like we're slacking, but we're really, we're stretching, and we're giving up. Some's giving up is giving up going to Mass when you really want to, you know. Yeah, and so I, you got to look at, you know, look at your bulletin and look at your church and, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, maybe you have a small church and there may not be a whole lot of different things going on, but um, there are other, you know, parishes around, like in ours, there's several uh, parishes in our deanery and uh, <clears throat> there's a, an Advent program at our parish and uh, there may be, uh, you know, Advent programs at the other parishes. Uh, look at those and, and consider getting involved. Um, our parish is offering a, a special concert, it's just phenomenal. special music, and uh, again, consider that. If see if they have something like that going on, or you might even you know maybe you're a musical person, and if you haven't uh, have it at your parish, maybe next year you can consider uh, getting something like that going, a special program. Um, and you can have a retreat. Right, you can go on a retreat, maybe. Uh, or they can know. have a mission at We Comes to Get Your Church. I'll ask <coughs> right. you right now. Some churches. Our like email that. is, <laughs> and we will come to get your church because we really do love Christmas. It's my, it is my favorite holiday. I love Easter, but Christmas I love it because the way that people's hearts are being prepared for Christ to come. If they right. know him or not, they're, they're joy-filled. And <coughs> So what did you think about the and ones? They, and remember, there's also the penance services. Oh, Typically, good. because it is a more of a penitential season, mm -hmm. that there will be penance services uh, during Advent uh, around your deanery. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just like as there is during Lent. Mm -hmm. So uh, consider all those things. What's that one with Daniel? <coughs> is it spiritual? And there's... Mm -hmm. Right, there is a, a group online, um, uh, good, solid Catholic folks called Spiritual Direction, all one word, uh, dot com, and uh, they're offering a Advent examine. You have mm -hmm. to search for it, but uh, That's cool it's something that. to consider. We are looking at that to do that, this uh, Advent. And something else we suggest, we have been doing this most a few years now, but we start the day in prayer, and I say three or four prayers that are rope prayers together, and then we begin with, um, we go up and do some of our work, and there are personal prayer time, and then we come down, and we, by eight o'clock, and, and counting, <laughs> we actually have person, we Pat reads the scriptures today, speaks a little bit on it, and we share, and then we also read a book, we're reading two good books, and they're, we're really trying to lay the groundwork for helping people to, um, that would go to our prayer time with us to mm -hmm. know Christ for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're reading Heaven is for Real, which is right. the way we're reading um, 
you can't let people drive you crazy if you don't give the keys to the car. And that's that's a way to do let I think saying let that's what do advent is to like take a heart check and say, Who's getting on my last nerve? And then, then make that your secret saint for the for the um holiday. They don't have to know it's you. I mean, I remember one time, honey, we did in our children, we always picked a secret saint and then one time I went to my mom's for, for lunch Sunday mm-hmm. and we came back and the house was clean. And I went, who did it? And no one said it. No one still this day said it because most of the kids are with us. But a secret saint does things in quiet and secret. And I, I sometimes may see on the air the, um, the elf on a shelf or the angel unaware. I don't know which one I'm going to do this year where I get on for the children and talk to them about, about um, good doing good works and loving one another and probably do the angel on the way or talk about mm-hmm. virtue mm-hmm. which we're reading are we reading something else about virtue that's that's the one about can't try to walk in virtue so there's a lot you can do in our home we did do a lot of traditions we I sent out over 500 cards my husband doesn't know about the first 500 to <laughs> close those friends. Yeah. and then I wrote a little letter and this year I'm gonna write really shorter because I feel like it, last year's was really long and we sent a picture of our family and to try to connect because I wrote three books this year, three out published, and I want people to enjoy and buy the books. And then we also, for Christmas, we t- gather together all the Christmas cards, and at the end of the Christmas season, put them in a basket, and we read one each time, and then talk about it. We haven't done some of those traditions for a while. Yeah, we want to put in a plug for uh, mm-hmm. Dynamic Catholic. Okay. They, oh, uh, I do like Each that. year they um, will provide uh, with parishes and, you know, uh, Oh, this is B- good. Books that are a dollar something a piece, um, so mm-hmm. very inexpensive that uh, um, you could hand out at Advent. You know, the so. people right, that you wouldn't have thought of, and and that was a plug again for a Catholic mom, which I write for for the past I think almost three four mm-hmm. years, and I wrote an article about um, Matthew Kelly, Kelly, the head of Dynamic Catholic, and he the article is actually called Life Is Messy, and I think that's a great. Great read and a great thing to go to Catholic Mom. See what the writers are writing. You know, sometimes I'm having a bad day and I'm like down now. And it's the middle of the night because I'm, if I'm up praying for people, I'll go to Catholic Mom and I'll read through some of the ones I haven't read through. And it, it uplifts my spirit. God can almost like pinpoint the one to read. It could be like last week or this week. And there's 100 writers. So I do want to plug for them. And, you know, it was Giving Tuesday. We're talking about Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And last week I remember saying, when God is blessing you, be good. <laughs> Be generous and be grateful. So Giving Tuesday means that you think of all the different ministries that you're being fed from. But where you go, you go to church, your your, your church, which ours is a church called Most Holy Trinity, and give to them. And then we, we, I happen to read Matthew Kelly a lot, and I also read Catholic Mom. You give to those ministries of John Beckovich, which is Woman of Grace. And the ones you're being fed from, it says in the scripture, you're supposed to kind of you know, right. read them back by giving some donation. Right. I don't know. There's time, tell, and treasure that we talk about a lot in our church, mm-hmm. right? So I'll talk about that with Thanksgiving and with um, Advent, how we can give, well, yeah. be so a gracious like, giver. Yeah, I um, would put a plug in for catholicculture.org, mm-hmm. um, good, solid Catholic folks. And there's a lot of groups out there that maybe you haven't been looking at and you might want to, uh, during this season, is to start looking at the information that uh, they're providing. Some things uh, keep you very much up, up on what's going with uh, you know, the culture in terms of mm-hmm. politics and things that may affect you as a, uh, a faith-filled person. Uh, and others um, will keep you up on things that are going specifically in terms of in the church mm-hmm. and, uh, and yet will help you grow in your faith because they're really solid and, and make you really think uh, about our faith and what we believe. And then to plug it for my podcast, I do, I do Deacon Dear with Deacon Pat. That's because he's, he's my own favorite deacon. And then, then I do on my own. Well, I'm all, I have interesting people come on that have written books, but I also do a little teaching sometime every morning called Take Five. And it is, it is really an uplifting thing. That's probably where the angel and the will pop in. So... It's, um, it's go to YouTube, Ellen Longing, or also get Deacon and Deer. We have past shows. Now, we're not, this is not just a commercial about us. This is the thing. God has called you all to do something. And I mentioned on my other show, and this vacation time, we had a lot of time to think and pray and to hear his voice and say, what is he calling me to do? 
I need to actually do it. <laughs> you actually do it. It's been about thinking about it. It's really, really good. But then when you start doing it, he'll provide the grace to do that. And we are connecting with so many different people lately. Um, and we are very thankful that God's putting things together. We're going to soon have some couples on our show. And that's because we connect with people through the media that are also doing the same thing. They're speaking out. Now, as our mom always says, and my best friend Sally used to say, I like to work in the background. But well, it doesn't have to speak out. We are evangelists for Jesus in our Catholic faith to show strong marriage, building marriage and family. And that's what we are working on this land. At least I am, because I feel like I sometimes get so busy doing God's work. My kids, I don't have the time to do it, although I'm helping for you on move. <laughs> it's a big job. So I'm saying that we have to really be aware that we don't want to save the whole world for Christ and forget our family. But if God is nudging you to do something, like Pat always wants to mention, work in the soup kitchen or... Maybe he's, maybe you want to give something with the Habitat of Humanity. These are things to explore during Advent, the giving season. And, and if it's not your thing, if it isn't, then you don't, you say, well, this was not for me. <laughs> I, I don't do everything I'm asked to do. I remember yeah. one priest asked me to pass out the Eucharist and I could, I can't bend my, I can't bend my fingers. So I go, hey, I think I'd just rather pray. And so I'm, I'm a Martha and you might be a Martha too, or Mary, you're Mary, but I'm kind of an evangelist. Be bold, be <clears> strong. And the Lord thy God be with you as you open and walk along with the grace to do it. So, yes, when Jesus comes, mm -hmm. which of course he comes to us every day, but in a special way, on Christmas, will you add to his light by being more like him like this. and bringing light into the world that is becoming ever darker, especially in those areas that were traditionally Christian, such as our country, the U.S., mm -hmm. Europe, um, and so I pray that you will be able to be more of a light than you have been. So well, we're true. traveling along, singing a song, side by side. God Amen. bless you.